This is the one remaining set of the original borax wagons, still intact, that were used to haul borax in Death Valley during the 1880s. These are on display at the Harmony Mine in Death Valley. The Death Valley Conservancy is commissioning these wagons to be duplicated in an effort to preserve part of what is known as the Big Hitch era. At the museum at the Furnace Creek Resort, there are the remains of two running gears that provide the information necessary to their construction. Building the wheels is a prime concern, and this video shows how that process has begun by turning the hubs from solid white oak blocks. When these blocks arrived here, they weighed from 290 to 320 pounds, and they came in as octagons 24 inches long. So to get these onto the lathe, it required building attachments necessary and capable of holding this kind of weight. So what we chose to use were two matching brake rotors off the front end of a car. They are identical and we used one for each end and we drilled them with a three bolt pattern so that they are interchangeable. So here we have the first one on and uh, Calvin here is going to wrestle this 300 pound block over to put the second rotor on the other end. So these are just put on, uh, we kind of measure for center, uh, so they aren't exactly round, but these blocks aren't necessarily symmetrical, so there's no way to get them exactly round. The lathing process is actually what's going to do that for us. So in order to get these up on the lathe, uh, we put them into a sling and tie the sling around the center of the block so we have something to grab a hold to. Now by this lathe there's a there's an overhead hoist and we've got to come along on it that we can grab a hold and pick these blocks up. The lathe that this is being done on is an old South Bend lathe that has an eight foot bed. It's called a gap bed lathe. And the one directly behind Calvin is a 1940s uh, vintage of an old Hendy lathe, both of them metal lathes. So you can see the little pole up on top that uh, we're going to hoist the block up using this little uh, hoist attachment here. And it swivels so we can swing this over the lathe and, and uh, get it attached to the, to the chuck. So as we swing this over, the rotor on the one end is going to attach to the chuck on the head of the lathe. It'll actually power the turning. And then the rotor on this end we will uh, attach to the tailstock with a bull nose attachment that will go into that tailstock and into the hole of the rotor, thereby centering uh, this block up so it's turnable. Now with the come along here, we can drop it down into position to where we can actually get the, the center into it. And that's what's actually going to carry the weight of this block as we start turning. So we'll take the sling off. And you notice since it's in an octagon shape, the, the outside corners are the widest part of these blocks. And these happen to be a little too wide and they interfere with the uh, ways on the lathe. We'll tighten up the chuck there. So we just take a, an electric hand plane and we're gonna knock these corners off until they all clear the lathe. So you can see the corners getting knocked off. Just knock them off one by one until it all clears. 
now you can see that we've got it to where it'll rotate. Now because these aren't exactly round and because they are so heavy, you'll notice when he turns on the lathe, it stands off to one side in case something might come apart on these. We didn't have anything happen on any of them. But there's a, a lot of weight swinging there and especially when it's not completely in balance. But this is a heavy lathe and it handles these blocks really well. So to start turning these, instead of using hand chisels and hand gouges, uh, we're using the boring bar and we're going to do the outside edge. Now the travel on, on this carriage is about 5 inches, so we do uh, increments of 5 inches. And what we ended up doing, we'll take this initial step down to about 17 inches in diameter. So it's a fairly lengthy process to get these down into a round configuration. And you start to see the, the end is down in into a round and we'll take this down until we get to about that 17 inch area. The ends on these hubs are going to be 13 to 15 inches, so we're still oversized here. But the whole purpose of turning these was to get rid of any excess wood so that these blocks can dry as much as possible. So here we're going to reach uh, to about halfway of this hub. Like I say these hubs are 24 inches long. So if we can get to the halfway point, uh, then we'll eventually take this hub and we'll rotate it 180 degrees and do the same thing from the other end. So here we have half of it into the round. And what we need to do is to bore a hole through the center. Well, in order to, to bore a hole through the center, we have to remove the, the disc brake, uh, the caliper, the rotor there, the rotor I mean, and the center bowl nose. So we built this steady rest, and it has, has uh, bearings on each of these three points that are heavy enough that can carry the weight here. So we'll attach this steady rest to the carriage, position it in place, and this is why we're shooting for the 17 inches. So here we'll bring the bearings up into place, and these will actually carry the weight and hold the hub in the position that it's in right now. So with the steady rest in place, now we can back the, the bull nose out and back up the, the tailstock there. And here we're going to use a two and a half inch bit to do our preliminary hole. We take the, the rotor off there. And we can get six or seven inches of travel in this tailstock here, uh, maybe eight inches. So we're going to do the initial two and a half inch hole, but our goal is to take these holes to about three and a half inches. We want to open up as much area as we can, expose as much surface area so we can help get some of the moisture out of these blocks to where they're actually usable for the wheels. These hubs were about 40% moisture when they came here, so there's a lot of moisture that needs to come out. So now we'll take the boring bar that we used to do the outside turning, and now we'll use it to open up the hole in the center. Like say we want to end up at about a three and a half inch hole when we're finished clear through. 
Well, since we didn't have a three and a half inch size bit, which are difficult to come by anyway, this boring bar will take it out. And this will actually be the same process that the hubs will go through when we do the finish boring for the center where the boxings, uh, the boxing is cast iron sleeve that the axles will actually run on, these wheels will run on the axles. So we get inside, this is kind of a by-feel procedure. And we can just go in as far as the initial hole was. And now that it's opened up, this will allow the two and a half inch bit to go in further and it'll go into the next step until we reach the halfway point inside. So we go our, our next six, seven, eight inches in there and we'll go back and put the, the boring bar in. The whole process of turning these hubs because of their size is, a, is just a step-by-step -step repetitive measure, just piece by piece. There's a lot of material that needs to get removed from these. Here we'll go back in again, just kind of going by feel, and we'll take that inside two and a half inch hole and open it up to the three and a half inch hole. So we've got that bored out, and you can see the sawdust is kind of real spongy. Uh, you can almost make snowballs, sawdust balls out of it. So with that half done, and we'll put the sling back on it take the, the weight off of the lathe and off of the, uh, the steady rest. Back off the carrying bearings. And since the steady rest is attached to the carriage, then we can just back up the carriage and the steady rest will come off. So loosen up the chuck that has a hold of the rotor on the other end. And we'll just take and rotate this 180 degrees. And we'll just repeat the whole process. Now because these rotors came off the same car, they're the same size, they're drilled the same, we'll we automatically keep our center. So we put the rotor back on the other side where, where it came off. And then the chuck will then attach to that rotor, take the steady rest off because now we need to put the bull nose back into the center. And this is what will put the block right back to center where it was uh, when we turned the first half off. We'll apply our pressure to where we've got it pretty well held, take off our sling, and just start the process over again. This whole procedure takes about, well, when we first started, it took us about six hours. Um, by the time, you know, you do a number of them, you kind of get a little more efficient. This was about ended up being about a four hour process to get these into round on the outside to get them stepped down to where the steady rest could hold them to hold them and then to bore out the center hole. So it's kind of a time consuming process. So here we're gonna do the same thing. Take off the outside. We'll take the end down again to the 17 inches and reach clear down to the center to where it will be a complete round block when we You can see some hubs here that have already been turned. We have 18 to do total. This one here is maybe 12 or the 13th one uh, that we turned down. So 
here we see the we reach to the center from the other direction all the whole hub now is into round a few of these uh, blocks had knots in them this was a pretty minor one uh, several of them had significant knots in them but they were still good soluble solid workable hubs so here we'll put our steady rest back in again take off the rotor put in the two and a half inch bit and do this all again now when Calvin turns this lathe on you'll notice that the center hole that is in the hub um, is not exactly in the center but it doesn't really matter this when this two and a half inch bit goes in that hole will be right in the center where it needs to be some of those little holes that they initially were drilled with were off quite a bit but it really didn't matter uh, by the time we put them on the lathe everything came up round where it, right where they needed to be so here we're going to take the two and a half we're going to open it up to the three and a half you say just kind of finishing the same process that the other end did just a time consuming procedure So now this is where we initially took all 18 hub blocks down to um, kind of a, this style, this configuration. And then they sat for almost close to a year, um, just drying out. Uh, out of the 18, we picked eight of the best that we thought were the best blocks that could actually be used for the for the big main wagons, the other 10 blocks, uh, Bobby came up and hauled them back down to Bishop down in the Mojave Desert where they sat all last summer at the 120, 130, whatever they get down there to dry out. And we left these eight here. You can see the amount of sawdust that was generated off of this hub. They, they lose about 30 pounds worth of uh, material when they were taken down to this shape. And then we stuck them on a pallet and they just sat and, like I say, dried for about the next year. So this is kind of the procedure that they went through initially, taking them down to round. and. Uh, what we do from here will include on the next video. These are uh, due to be drying now. We'll let them set and then we'll take them to size and actually start cutting the mortises into where the spokes go. So thanks for watching.